Hello, Pan family. My name is Peter Levitov. I had, um, I've had a lot of people ask me about my notation system that I utilize to record ideas, um, to get specific about certain ideas, and to effectively share those with other people. So I thought we should do that. So here we are. So the system is based off of a pretty standard system that a lot of folks use um, called tubs or timing unit box system. Um, so we have eight boxes. We're counting them as one and two and three and four and. Um, instead of, we could certainly count it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I like this approach so we can really feel the downbeats, which I've outlined in blue here, and the upbeats. So here we have what the left hand is doing on the top box, and on the bottom box what the right hand is doing. Okay, so the top box here is the right hand lead. So that's for anybody who wants to work on right hand dominance for a given rhythm. And the bottom one here will focus on the left hand lead. So we're gonna work with the same exact rhythms. We'll just flip them around for your hand dominance. Ultimately, I strongly recommend trying both and getting really comfortable with both. For me, the hand pan particularly lends itself to ambidextrous play. And I think it's one of the uh, nice things that it has to offer to kind of balance the left and right uh, hemispheres of our brain. The method that I want to work with for a lot of these beginning exercises is the alternating hand method. So basically what that means is we're going to keep time by giving every box a strike with the other hand, one after the other. So no hand will strike twice in a row. So that would be two boxes here together would be one hand striking twice in a row. So the pattern you're gonna notice with all of these rhythms is there's a zigzag. For right hand lead, we'll start on the right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. For the left hand lead, we're gonna start with the left. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. For the sake of having an anchor that's really clear in our minds, we're going to always start the first beat of our rhythms with a zero. <laughs> So, for this exercise, we're going to be working with three kinds of strikes. Uh, zero, a talk, or a shoulder talk, and all the blanks are ghost notes. A quick note about talks, if you're not careful and you're getting really excited, you can land talks a little too close to a note. Depending upon the instrument, this could in time detune an instrument. So, where I look to strike, is if you look in between each note, you see there's an hourglass. I like to strike right in the middle of that hourglass where the most meat of the instrument is. That way, if you're real precise, you know you're not getting into the tone field and you tend to get the most ceramic sound there as well. Okay. So the reason I like to focus with just the zeros and the tocks is so that we have a real narrow focus, just a couple things to think about so we can really start to internalize the rhythm in our body so that it comes through naturally. Eventually, we could change any of the zeros or the talks to tone fields. But at first, we're gonna just stay right here. Okay, another note about talks. If you are comfortable with shoulder tones, feel free to do a shoulder tone muted or open. Um, if you're new to a shoulder tone strike, take your time here because you really want to be right at that place where the tone field moves into the interstitial space. If you're f over further and you strike like that often with the kind of force that's required to get that ceramic percussive sound. If you do that here, you can really damage the note over time, also depending upon the stability of the given note. So I recommend if you are trying to transition into this kind of sound over to the shoulder tone, take your time, go very slowly with these exercises and make sure above all else you're really you hear that specific sound, you're not activating much of the tone field at all. Really hear that. As we move on in the notation, we will refer to the notes in an ascending and descending 
um, order from the lowest tone to the highest. Um, so zero, and if you have the next lowest tone at your belly button, it ascends like this. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, eight. So another couple notes about technique, be careful for palm dragging with these sort of techniques because you don't want to be putting pressure into the tone fields also can be dangerous. So make sure that your palms are lifted or if they are here that they're gently here kind of in a swishy manner and that you're not driving power into the pan. Um, as far as the actual talk strike itself goes. I personally use either my pointer finger or my ring finger. Um, if I'm using my pointer, it tends to be more either down, like a doggy paddle. If I'm using my ring, it's more rotational, using these muscles, like opening a door, boom. Like I have a little piece of dust here and I wanna strike it towards myself. Get the dust off towards myself. And when I'm doing that, oftentimes I'm using my thumb in that counter rotational motion. So this is like a boat on the water. There's a fulcrum right through the arm there. That's how I think about it. Flick a piece of dust away and towards you. Okay. Also, that's another way I'm just using the pointer. Middle finger's fine, you find one that's comfortable for you. So, let's get started. For the right hand lead, again, we're gonna start with the right hand. So, we have a zero here. Oh wow, that's an ugly zero. Let's start over. <laughs> okay, right hand lead, we have a zero in the one. Left hand lead, zero in the one. Uh, the key here is that we're speaking consistently, our timing is consistent, whether it deviates overall is okay with the overall tempo, but they need to be equal, each one, to everything else within the time. Um, so we can't count it one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and... <laughs> we need to count it consistent. One, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and for these exercises again we're going to be alternating so you'll see a zigzag pattern okay and we're not going to write in every box when there is a blank that is a ghost note okay so if i were to play this all the way through we start by counting out loud. <laughs> counting out loud is extremely helpful for internalizing a rhythm. Okay, so if we were to play this top one, right hand starts one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And if it was the left hand, it would be like this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Yeah. So I recommend for your ghost notes to pull off so you're not on the tone field at all. The ghost note is just that. We want it to be as quiet as possible. Um, again, this is not the only way to think about it, but to start, I think it's, you can always dial it back up, but you want to make sure your starting point is really, your baseline is very, very quiet, as quiet as you can maintain and that way when we do decide to accent the accent has that much more pop because the um the ghost slay a foundation like a blank slate so you really want your ghosts to be strongly differentiated with your talks okay so again, we're going slow, as slow as we need to, to maintain that nice, quiet, comfortable place, breathing deep into your belly. Ideally, if you can pull that off, 
So we're looking at these eight units of time. Putting a, a sound, filling in a sound in one of those units, um, there's a technical term called onsets. That can be described as an onset. So in these rhythms, we have one onset. So let's start to look at two onsets. Again, with these, you can use a zero or a talk. Feel free to change them up as feels appropriate for you, experiment. We're just gonna run through pretty much all the basics that we can do within this eight beat count and uh, to get a feel for the various spots. To specifically, what does the two feel like? The three, the four, what do the upbeats feel like? Here I wanna make a note uh, differentiating between learning and practicing. Learning is getting something into your brain and practicing is getting it into your bones, into your body, so that it's intuitive, it's a part of you. And our human tendency is to say, okay, I've learned it, great, I got it, moving on, I want it, okay, I got it, yeah, woo! <laughs> when we're playing that fast, we tend to do a couple things. One, we tense up, and so what I've learned, if I could go back in time, I would tell myself one thing, slow down and breathe. If you can't be comfortable in your body doing a rhythm, you're practicing too fast. So slow it down and get comfortable. Uh, I would think to myself when I'm rushing, like, am I late for something? Do I have an appointment? Like, I'm supposed to be here having fun, relax. This is, uh, the process of learning is pretty straightforward. Slow is fast, get it right the first time. When we're learning a new behavior, the science indicates about 600 repetitions for a new behavior, 6,000 to uh, unlearn and relearn a behavior. So do yourself a big, big, big favor and go slow, be comfortable, train comfort into all of your rhythms early on and have fun. Because if you're not having fun, what's the point? Okay. <laughs> So as we're going through this, if there are any rhythms that you really, 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 really love, then uh, write them down. Uh, you can get grid paper and make these pretty easily. Write them down and practice them until you don't have to think about them anymore. And the way to do that that I utilize is a process towards um, internalization. It's kind of like a protocol. You go down the list. Speak it. Always start by speaking a rhythm you don't know because as we internalize it in the body, then it's much easier to play. And the voice is one of the most ancient and foolproof ways we've utilized to do this. So when you're speaking it, not just speaking, but emphasizing the accents. In this case, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So let's run it with the right hand. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One Okay, left hand, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, so in this process towards internalization, we move from, and this might be a week, a month, a year, depending upon the rhythm and its complexity. And start by speaking, accenting out loud the accents, then move to maybe a whisper. Then you start to move to saying it uh, quietly, then you stop moving your tongue and you're just saying it in your mind. And then you just try to feel the groove. If at any point you're not 100% that you're on the groove, remember 6,000 repetitions to unlearn and relearn. Make certain you're getting it right the first time if you're looking for this kind of precision. Um, stop and go back to counting out loud. If you're not 100% certain, go back to the top and work your way down. It might just take 10 seconds to go up work your way back down. So here we're looking at two onsets, focusing on the downbeats, right? So we can move it to two, and we can move it to four. Let's do that. Right hand, one, two, and four, and one, and two, and three, 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 and four. And moving on to the left, as we one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and one and two and three and four and 
again, one of the reasons that I really like to focus on the alternating hand method early, early on is because we're getting a physical moment, a physical action that is identifying with each architectural feature of the rhythm. So we're really, it's one of the most effective ways to internalize rhythms early on in your practice to really get it into your body. That being said, other ways that I strongly recommend experimenting with is moving your body, utilizing your body to internalize. That's why in a lot of ancient traditions, we begin with the words, the sounds, speaking them, or dance, internalizing the rhythms through movement. Um, I find it very intuitive to accent the downbeats with a downward motion. So if you have your foot, you know, one and two and three and four. If you're using your head or your body, one and two and three and four and. So there's a lot of ways to do it, left and right, one and two and three and four. And it's just a nice way to kind of casually get into the feeling of the rhythm. Now we have the four, right hand, one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and left hand one and two and three and four and one and two four And four and one and two, three and four and hockey dokey. Okay, so let's add some onsets. Let's start with the two with the three, still focusing on the downbeat. Right hand and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and left hand. One and two and three and four and one and two, four and okay. Again, if any of these appeal to you, get a graph book, jot them down, the ones that you like, and practice them, practice them, practice them until they're super duper internal. Um, and also, work both the right and left hand early on if you can. I have found to be incredibly enjoyable and incredibly effective in being able to access um, various rhythms with a lot of fluidity. Okay, right hand. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Four and one and two and three. Four and one and two and three. One of my favorites. Remember, you can change um, any of these around, any of the talks to zeros, if it feels right. I strongly recommend keeping this as a zero as we're learning new rhythms, because again, that's your anchor point, and it's, it tends to be the strongest place on the instrument uh, to kind of feel that ground. So let's play with that idea, though, and change this to a zero. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and Left hand, one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Kind of at a faster speed, feel the groove a bit. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. As these 
start to get really strong. Don't rush to this, to this right away, I recommend. Get it really strong in your bones and when you don't have to think about it anymore and you just feel the groove and you know the groove, then you could exchange various zeros and tocks within the groove for tone fields. Let's walk down the scale with, uh, let's say left hand lead and just change this nine, the next round it will be eight, seven, six, and then we'll go back up. Uh, nine, eight, seven, six, seven, eight, nine. See what that feels like. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. play around with these at your leisure. So let's scoot this talk over. Start to get the feel of how little changes make such a big difference. What I find particularly exciting about this method and working with specificity, we start to experience how much diversity can be created, not by playing more, but by being specific about your blanks, by being specific about your silence. Right hand. four and one and two. This is one of my other favorites. <laughs> one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and left hand. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and five and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, again, this eventually can move to notes, um, and you'll play with that uh, when this is really grounded, hopefully, <laughs> and just have fun with it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Okay. So in the future, in future lessons, we're going to look at scale exercises, different ways to run up and down. And just as a teaser to kind of get the feel of where this is going, when you understand which hand is moving in which place and where the one comes back down, you can start to time out and plan and get an intuitive feel for cool fills, um, intriguing fills to break up your grooves. For instance, more on that later. <laughs> Okie dokie. We're going to start to just emphasize the upbeats. So, we are going to keep the first downbeat zero here. That's our anchor point. That's to give us that strong sense of ground. Um, so let's start. Let's start. If you're looking at it as a right hand lead, you can notice that your lead hand is all the downbeats. So you know right away if it's on the top, it's going to be played with your less dominant hand. In the case of this rhythm with the right hand, you'll notice that the left hand is going to play the top. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Opposite holds true for the left hand lead. Now we know that if it's on the bottom, it's your less dominant hand, your right hand. In the case of the left hand lead, one and two and three and four and one and two four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> All right, moving into the and after the two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. If you want to, you can get sassy on that. <laughs> one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and left hand lead. One and two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and 
one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four three and four and okay Hockey Ducky Moving on we are moving Hello Mister Moving down the line Yes we're moving down the line Okay right hand one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two three and four one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two left hand lead one and two and three and four and one and two Four and one and two and three and four and okay. All right. Last but not least, we have the upbeat after the four. So right hand lead. One and two. This one I particularly like with a zero. Okay, so here we change it from a talk to a zero, which I particularly like gives like a and one, gives like a charge up to the one. Right hand first. This is one of my favorites. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Left hand one and two and three and four and one and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, a little bit faster. So now let's start looking at three onsets. So the downbeat with two upbeats. Right hand lead. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay. Right uh, left hand. One and two and three and Left hand, one and two and three and four and one and two and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and.
keep in mind also that any of these can change to zeros as well. Yeah, so let's add the talk here. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Left hand lead. One and two and three and four and one and two and one and two. One and two and three and four and one and two. So if at any point I'm demoing any of these too fast, please don't take that as indication that you need to play faster. I have found that I can save a huge amount of time if I can actually get myself to slow down, which can be pretty challenging to stay on top of. But basically when I slow down, I find that I'm still playing about twice as fast oftentimes from where I need to be where going through the groove, I can get it right 100% of the time. If I have any deviations in what I'm trying to do, it's indication to slow down. 600 repetitions to understand a new behavior, more or less, neurologically. 6,000 to unlearn and relearn. This is the golden rule. So do yourself a favor, get it right the first time. And also, when we're going slow, we can really take note of our technique. Is my hand exactly where I want it to be? Do I like all the ergonomics and the subtleties going on into the way, going on in the way that I play? And if not, now's the perfect time to change it. But once you embed that into your body, it becomes much more difficult down the line. <laughs> okay. All right, let's flip this around a little bit. Let's take this zero and place it right here. So you start to get the idea of, of how much variance there can be when uh, we start to really try to look at things specifically. Okay. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay, left hand. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, so a quick note on counting. We want to be counting as long as it takes to learn these things, but remember the differentiation between learning and practicing. Learning is to get it into your brain, practicing is to get it into your body. So as soon as you know a certain rhythm, don't consult the chart more than you need to. Let it go, get into the groove, see how it feels, um, and count again also only as long as it takes to really feel it internalized. If you feel like at a certain speed you can go for it to try to just jam it out, then try that. And if at any point you're uncertain, go back to counting out loud. <laughs> okay, let's back up a little bit and look at some talk rhythms where the talks are separate from each other a little bit more. 
One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. I like this um, even spacing that gives that sort of backbeat feel. You may find that as you're, as you're trying, if you're trying to do both left and right hand, that your less dominant hand has a harder time getting a real crisp talk. And just be patient, it takes time. It took me about a year before I felt really comfortable with this finger to get something close to this finger. Okay, and scoot everybody over. Scoot this guy here. And that guy over here. One and two and three and four and one and two. So you can see before when we have these two in the and after the one and the three, we have the same spacing. Um, so we scoot it over and you have that same consistent feel of the talks, but in a different place, which I think is kind of nice. Right. Now let's backtrack a little bit more and go into looking at just zeros, no talks. Has a specific feel that I tend to really enjoy. Left hand lead, one and two and three and four and one. So there are a bunch of ways to practice. Um, I think it's best to find something that suits you and suits your lifestyle. There are a couple things that I've developed in my practice routine that I really enjoy. One is what I call a fun sandwich, which is pretty straightforward. However long you have to practice, you start, you jam something you enjoy and that's easy and you don't have to think about. However long it takes to feel really comfortable and then you start focusing on something whatever is the new thing whatever requires a little bit of discipline and maybe challenging down the road practice that for a while and then finish by trying to integrate what you learned into a more intuitive flow. So maybe you change the accents to tone fields. Maybe you add some fills, but you stay connected to that anchor as best as you can. And if you reach out and you fall over, just stop. One and two and three, slow down. I found extremely supportive along those lines is what's called gorilla practice and that's tiny micro practice sessions and you'll be amazed of how effective they can be when you're actually um, honing in on something specific like this so you're making tea in the morning the water is boiling you have five minutes great awesome grab your pan pick a, a grid and set your timer for three minutes 
and tell yourself, I'm going to play this as perfectly as I can for this time and don't stop. And you will have a whole new experience of how long time can be. <laughs> a couple times a day, even once a day, this can be extremely effective. Again, with all of these rhythms, I can't emphasize more strongly. Slow, slow, slow. Slow is fast. Build the foundation strong and be comfortable in your body. If you're not comfortable in your body, we, can, we get to spend all day oftentimes in weird, anxious situations. Let's try not to bring that to our hand hand. Holding our breath, feeling really tight, feeling like we have to go somewhere. Right, take your time. Get make sure you can breathe in your belly and, you know, you feel loose in your body. It's a good practice to every now and again grab your shoulders, put them up to your ears, and drop them. <laughs> Just to make sure you're not holding anything there. Check out, where's my back? Have I gone into Quasimodo land? Which is okay sometimes. It's appropriate. I go into brooding mode where I feel it's appropriate. But uh, more often than not, we save a lot of energy by being upright and cozy. And this is no substitute for improvisation, for feeling the flow. What this is, is an anchor to allow you to have something, some direction to give you movement. One tools that go in your bag of tricks. So you can release your mind from thinking about, what am I doing next? You have an anchor. That's what I'm doing. And I might move around that anchor. But that anchor's there. talk about various fills in future episodes. An important concept that I strive to remember when I'm practicing is whatever it is, whether it's tone, speed, how slow, how quiet, or how loud, um, whatever the concept I'm focusing on, to never assume that I know it or I've refined it enough, right? So always assuming I don't know, always assuming there's more that I can extend. You know, how soft can I play and still get a nice tone? What can I do with one hand? You know, there's so many places we can apply this. But always assuming that your refinement is infinite and then there's a potential for it to be so. If you think you're done, then you are. And in some cases, that can be really sad because there's a lot um, yet to explore. Another fun way to work with this is to keep the, the zigzag in mind and just arbitrarily put in zeros or tocks anywhere without thinking about the rhythm, just whatever. But remember, it's got to stay in the zigzag so you have the alternating method going. This is not the only way to practice, but this is a way for this particular exercise. I approach it to internalize every part of the rhythm. So, okay, so here's the zigzag for this one. Let's just say zero talk talk zero, right? Just do something that looks interesting and try it. One and two, one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... So there you can see there was a deviation what I was trying to do, so that's indication right away. Slow down. One and two and three and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and four, 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 and one, and two, you find some use from it, and if not, feel free to enthusiastically throw it in the garbage. <laughs> There's a bunch of ways to approach making music. This is just one, and it's certainly not the only. And uh, yeah, honor what feels good to you. Um, I have found a balance of intuitive play and more mental play have been really effective for me. Uh, let me know what you think. Please let me know what works for you, what doesn't. 
and feel free to experiment with this to your heart's content. If you have any questions, let me know. I will try to address them as best as I can. Um, the exercises we went over, I have provided below a worksheet for and also some blank eight count grids so you can play with. And if you find stuff you like, feel free to make videos and respond. I would love that. I'd love to have a dialogue going with this sort of thing. <laughs> okay. There it is. Enjoy. Have a beautiful day.